So, um, so yeah, so just go back and practice. You can just practice the tongue and eventually you'll feel more comfortable and you, you, it's something for you to work on. You go ta 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 you know, get more aggressive and more legato, so on and so forth. But right now, yeah, we want as nice a sound as you could produce controlled. Da. More da, less ta. Try that. Man, I'm so used to the ta that I don't know how to that, sell it's, it's gonna be fine. You're, you, I can't expect you to get that right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm telling you that yeah. because that's how it is. But you'll get there. Mm. I'm not worried about it. As long as you know mm. is is the thing. Mm. All right, and then one more thing that we gotta use every time. Every time, um, the tuner. I have a. All right, now try it. Within that time, just try to get it. And so four beats, you get your loudest. And then well, no, I'm back. talking about as well as making sure that I. Oh uh, yeah. A lot. This is a lot to think about. You see, well, we'll see here, 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 here. Watch. It kind of is a lot at first. Yeah. But now, you know, like after you do it for so long, you know, it's like when you first learn to write your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you got to practice writing it a hundred times, and you still don't write it that good. It looks like a crappy letter R's, your letter L is like all squiggly, you know, whatever. That I can't expect anything else from you right now. Yeah. But you keep doing this for a week, one week. You keep doing this, and you're gonna be completely different next week. Completely boom, clean sound, like nice. Got, not 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 next week, but maybe in a couple years mm -hmm. is when this stuff will really really come out. Yeah, I'll show you. this is uh, the way I practice the tones. I have this thing. Have you, you seen these? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, I bought this one, and you have the sound back. So, whatever note that you're playing, it will play it back to you. Uh, so yeah. then you can, I usually... To kind of uh, match it. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll put this in here, and I'll put these on so that way I can hear what the tone sounds like. And then... I'll do the I'll do the same thing. Uh, what is it like? One, two, three. That's about sixty, right? So then. Mm -hmm. But but see the problem that I have with this mm -hmm. situation is that is that it's becoming a crutch. All right, and and you're and you're getting used to doing it like that, mm -hmm. so that so so you hear a tone and you match it. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. But you, what I what I really need you to learn here is the vibration of the mouthpiece on your teeth, mm -hmm. rattling your skull, and you know what that feels like when it's in tune. I know I don't even need a tuner when I tune like like playing with a big band. I play the tuner all the time. Don't get it twisted. I always, you know, make sure because it's always good to, you know, check in the box. Am I perfectly in tune? Hundred percent check in the box. Good, mm -hmm. verified. But then, when I'm playing like in a big band, like with a saxophone section, right? I can't sit there with my tuner and 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 you know, like like we're gonna put these in here. Let me see, you know, like that. That's like, nah, man. That's for the practice room. Right now, we're gonna play. Mm -hmm. So so I'm preparing you for like the playing situation. This is this is. What's gonna get you to to when you put you know you, I wonder huh oh no I'm flat push in a little more you just you just know to know something so good is one thing and then to to rely on something in order to get to where you're going is something completely different. Okay. So what I want you to do is is don't even worry about this anymore. I mean you can continue doing this. I'm not saying it's a bad exercise. No, I feel I mean, this is this is this is riding with training wheels. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 If if you, if you see it like that, there's there's nothing wrong with it. I just know that this method is what got me to like giving me the confidence of saying, hey, when I play a note, like, I don't need to really check it. Like, I know where it's in tune. Like, it's cold in here, and I'm flat. Yeah, this is the, my saxophone is really cold. I don't want to be flat. Never be, being sharp is better than being flat. I was playing earlier and I got used to where my mouthpiece was. You want it to like hover right there in the middle as much as possible. So try try that. Try try it again. Try try an A this time. Um ready. Cool. That was good. It was I think you were really focusing on the tune yeah. here, which is good, being in tune. But the, the, the way you got loud and then softer was not even. So, try to keep it even, smooth, like that. Try a B flat. A B. Uh, right. That was good on the soft, uh, and the attack was better, but right, we right. get loud. At the end, you yeah. need more diaphragm pressure. I can tell you're not giving me, you, you gotta push that air. Think of the air, think of the air like this. When you walked into this room, the lights were already on. Mm -hmm. Have the lights gotten any brighter or dimmer since you got in here? Uh, neither. They stayed exactly the same. Look at the light, right? It's just right there. It's on, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't get brighter. It doesn't get, it doesn't get darker. It just stays right there until I turn it off. When I turn it off, then it's over. Mm -hmm. That's your air. Turn on the air. Push the air through. Push the air all the way. That's a big saxophone, man. And you're a bigger dude. Like, you're tall. You're well built, man. You got this. You don't have no problem, right? Yeah. You push the air right through that saxophone and visualize it coming out of the bell. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it's about. That's what I want you to do. So at the very end, I should be out of air almost or like at like 5% or something? No, no, no. Not, not out of air. If you are out of air, then that means you need to practice breathing and, and releasing the air more to mm -hmm. control it. I want want the fullness of, of, of the sound to be completely supported by your air. Like, yeah. not, not, not coming out like, 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 for example, what I heard at the end there was more like a... <sighs> See how it just kind of, like, died? Mm. Like, like it, yeah, you yeah, let it die. Yeah. Don't let it die. Never let it die, but bring it back and put it down. You know? Yeah. See what I'm saying? I pushed the air all the way through. I made it soft, and you could hear even like the spit, you know, whatever coming through a little bit. But but the air never stopped. The air kept going. Yeah. You can you can. I put air in it all the time like that, and no noise comes out. But the air's still going. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so, so yeah, it's all about putting air through the horn. That's the most important thing. Put it, you want to get a good sound? Put air through the horn. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Is right now is to control that air. Start nice and and then put air through it. Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. Give me get. Let's see how big you get. And then and then and then 
put it back down gently, like a glass, <laughs> like a like a glass, you know, with, with with champagne. You don't slam it down on the counter. That's at the bar with a big old beer. You slam it down, but a glass of champagne, you set it down nice and easy. Try that. Try C. Two, ready. <sighs> That attack was good. I like how you got loud. But in the middle, it still sounds a little wavy, unsupported. Try really, really flexing your stomach this time. Play a C. Ah, at the end. Now that was that was by far the absolute best I've heard you play since you got here. Okay. That was the best sound production that you've done. I'm not even lying. You go back and listen to it. Right. That was nice and in control. Now at the end, your lungs kind of just gave up. You didn't have no more air. You need to do this over and over again and you will grow and you'll feel it. You'll feel the control, man. You'll feel the control. That was the nicest uh, that you've done and then it started out uh, and it grew so good and it came down but towards the end, yeah, it, it, it collapsed. That's yeah, I fine. I feel my... Uh, uh, that was the first time I've actually ever flexed my abs. I told you, um, yeah. So you have to actually do that, because then I could feel when the uh, air was being pressed out, my abs were doing this. So it's the same thing as, like, in the very beginning when I was trying to produce sounds and my jaw was, like, doing all these little, like, micro changes, and that's when you could hear all of this uh, stuff going on, so... It's all about being relaxed. Yeah. But in order for you to be relaxed, you got to have that confidence. Yeah. And in order for you to have that confidence, you got to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And this is the best way to get you to, to, to know what you're doing. Yeah. When you feel it all like that, so that eventually you can just relax and be like, I know what I need to do yeah, when yeah, I need yeah. to do it. So this is one of those things that you do 15 minutes a day. This is just 15 minutes a day. You don't need to do this all day long. Yeah. Man, you're going to get bored of playing long terms all day. But now, let's see. Try high D. Like, like, palm key D. Yeah, let's go do this. Or, no, this? Palm key D, oh. yeah. So at the end, man, you get this like sound that's like a laser beam. It's just like that's exactly the opposite of what you want. All right? All right. You want you want a nice big fat. Try a middle D. Try a middle D, and you want it to be warm, nice, and just like like inviting. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Like invite as as musical as possible is what you're trying to do. Because when you play that high D, now now that's just something I don't think you're gonna fix it today. I think it's gonna take you a few months before you really start to conceptualize that 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 warmth, right? Yeah. That that feeling that you want to convey and you want to push that nice and even. Right, and, and and that's gotta be throughout the whole horn. A lot of cats practice the middle of the horn so good, but then the pinky keys, the low, the low register, mm -mm, they don't practice that. Mm -hmm. And then the high register sounds awful because nobody practices up there neither. Practice the extremes, the low register and the high register. Pay more attention to those than the middle of the sax. The middle of the sax is gonna work itself out just fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Guarantee it, because that's where you're always gonna be. But when you work out the altissimo, that's where I'm finally starting. To do. I got this new neck; it's it's setting me up. I, I'm I'm working on the altissimo stuff because that that's just cats are doing that now. Yeah. Altissimo's hip. Charlie Parker not didn't do too much altissimo. Yeah, they cannonball out here a couple times. They dabbled up there and they came right back down. Yeah. But now Chris Potter does entire solos in in the altissimo register. You know what I'm saying? You know, Lenny Pickett for Saturday Night Live has got the best control out of anyone. Uh, ever, ever, you know what I mean? Huh. You know, Saturday Night Live. Uh, I don't, I don't have cable. Oh, oh, if you get a chance, Lenny Pickett's the saxophone player mm -hmm. for here. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll yeah, have actually, you, to you could, uh, would you get a chance? I'll either remind you or you can send me just a whole bunch of people that you think I should listen to or that you like because I'm, I'm stuck in like the old, not that it's bad, but I just need more uh, of a variety of people to listen to. Cause I think I just I just found out who Lou Donaldson was. Oh man, that dude is insane. I just found out that guy is insane. I just found out that Lou Donaldson, for all 
all of these years. Well, I'm, I'm from South Florida. Yeah. In my neighborhood of Plantation, he's my neighbor. Really? He's he lives in my neighborhood. Oh man, that's crazy. Like yeah, I'm about to go over there on <laughs> yeah. the 14th, and I'm about to go like a <laughs> really good friends with Lou Donaldson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just. You mean you're actually up. gonna go play with him, or are you gonna go try to find him? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce myself, say hello. I'll, I'll try to play, and if he can give me pointers or tips yeah. or anything, or he's got, I need to associate myself. <laughs> yeah, no, he's that dude's insane. Lou Donaldson's the man. He's insane. So check this out. <laughs> definitely send you a list of you know sax players modern and, and older guys yeah, who as well very important okay let's um so that's for this stuff you have to work on this on your own more I'll, I'll, I'll write this down here for you more more da less ta all right you know what that means now Let's go to something else. That's enough for sound production. Let's go with some of your finger stuff. Uh, let me hear you play your scales. Oh man, dude, I have not practiced scales not once. <laughs> Every time you play your scales should be with a yeah. metronome. And, so and listen, the magic number is 60 beats per minute. Yeah, why? Because that's a beat a second. That's just time. Mm -hmm. And right there, if you can play at 60 beats per minute, you'll eventually be able to play 240. Yeah. So no problem. So, so the bass line to start out with. Is let's hear you play um, your major scales. I want, to, I want you to play all of them. Play them as fast as you can at this tempo. Be it quarter notes or... Eighth oh, notes or something. Uh, I'll probably have to stick with quarter. Um, am I doing two octaves or one? Oh, all right, here we go. Let's just do this. Scales. Mm -hmm. so, so, so here's your your um. This is uh uh, tonal study number one. Mm -hmm. We'll call this uh. Tonal study number one. And this will be finger study number one. You should always balance tonal studies and finger studies. And this is just exclusively saxophone. Mm -hmm. This isn't music. This is just for your saxophone. This is for you to know your saxophone. So scales. So for example... Start on G. No, nah, man, it's not even that hard. You, 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 oh, it, no, no, no. You know, you know what that. it is? It's not that. You know what it is? I, I felt the same. I know exactly what it means. It's, it's, like, it's like you see the whole picture. You know there's like thousands of scales and millions of ways mm -hmm. to play them. Just how do you eat an elephant? No, I was saying because I just came up with like a, a practice schedule and I didn't include scales on there because um, I'm playing the arpeggios. Um, so I've just, and then with this new sound exercise, like, hey, you gotta go back, redo the schedule, figure out what needs to be in there, what doesn't need to be in there. Um, but this just goes back to what I was saying earlier, that this is the longest marathon in the world, so, um, here we go.
Okay. So for your scales, your scales are going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Alright? You're going to start, for example, your G scale. Right? Mm -hmm. You know your G scale. Play your G scale really quick. Well, whoever taught you to like the mechanics of how to play saxophone did a good job mm -hmm. because you're not like you, you keep your fingers on the keys. That's where no, they belong. Yeah. That's a great. That's great. So you're off to a really good start. You got some good habits. You don't have many bad habits that I've seen. Maybe just how you stay in your posture a little bit. You could work on that. But that's getting in front of a mirror, and then of course your embouchure. Yeah. But that's why I gave you that right off the bat. That's like the most important thing. Nothing that you do matters unless you have a good sound. Yeah. Just, so that's why it's number one. Scales. Check it out. So you play your G scale. Play your scale from the root right all the way to the highest note on the saxophone in that key. So what note is that for you in G on tenor? F sharp? Yeah. And then you go all the way down to the very bottom. What is that note? Uh, of the B. saxophone. Yeah. B. A B. And then go back up to the root. Okay. Alright. So what I want you to do is... Oh. Okay. What I want you to do is like this. Scales. Whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, triple and eighth notes. Sixteenths, etc. So let's start with let's start with with half notes. Whole notes is hard, but but the reason why is because you'll be using a tuner. In fact, let's uh let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do whole notes. So a whole note would be four of these, right? That's right. Four four beats. Uh, one. So start with a G scale. Each note gets a, its own four. Uh huh. Oh man, this is, this is that, just doing that on scales is gonna be like an hour long practice, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here, here's what I want you to focus on. Mm -hmm. I want you to focus on every note sounding exactly as fat, as big as the note before it. Mm -hmm. Do it. There's nothing better than actually doing it. No, I, I guess. I was actually asking all of the scales, whole notes. That that is something that I should practice. Like all. I don't of think like I that. don't think you need to do all of them. Mm -hmm. I think if you do like one scale like that a day, mm -hmm. right? But then move to other ones and and change them up. You know oh, what okay. I mean? So okay. Yeah, but yeah. but but like for example, like G, you're probably good on G, but maybe C sharp. Maybe maybe you're not that good on C sharp. So the ones that I'm not. So the ones that I'm not as good on go a little bit slower. It sounds like. Well, then. yeah. What you do, what you do is is play everything that you don't know. Play it slow enough so that you cannot mess it up. Okay. Now, now there's a there's a science, there's an art between playing whole notes because when you're playing your your scales, you're not worried about the technique. You're going from one note to another. What you're really worried about is is that note in tune? Is it the right note? Is it is it is it sound nice and fat like the one before? Or am I going da da? Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, right there. Stop. Fix it. See what I'm saying? And and keep it even. You want evenness mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing. And then and then by the time you get to sixteenth notes or or, or thirty second notes, like that. Mm -hmm. you, you just you know, and and it just stays even when you get. They're not really even in time, but the sound, the yeah. sound, right? It sounds nice and like a square, not like... Did you 
you hear how it was more like a triangle? Mm-hmm. That's the normal tendency. I have to actually think about it to, for that to happen mm-hmm. now. But but eventually, which is completely the opposite. Before when I was doing it, the natural tendency was to come out like a triangle, right? Yeah. And now I have to think about it and put effort in order for it to be like a triangle. It's just like a square now. I, like, like, like writing your name. You don't think about it. Mm-hmm. At first, you got to. You have to. But then later on, man, you, you're going to be way... Like this... this this is going to be tremendous for you. This is going to set you up on the right path to do whatever you want to do. Okay. Because no matter what you play, be it swing, bebop, jazz, Latin, gospel, uh, uh, waltz, anything, anything, mm-hmm. these sound concepts don't change. The sound production of the saxophone does not change. Neither does the scales, neither does the technique. Yeah. But, of course, those are your tools to use for your artistry of expression. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so like, 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 play. And you can control that easy. Why? Because you've done this a million times. You've done it so many times that it's like, what? Like, psh, forget about it. You know, yeah. I love it. So, so try um, your scales. Uh, let's hear half notes. Half notes on a G scale. One, ready. <laughs> learn two new uh, fingerings today or three even when you play E play your E right now your high E cool. that's the E that they teach you in the books here's your new E play a D now push this key and then this one and then this one play go from a D wait wait, wait. Feel what that is. That one right up here, the one that you never press, because here's yeah. your B, and then this is the one you never press. Yeah. You're going to start pressing it. So that one, right. and just like that. Go from a D to that. I don't know. How do you... Put, if you go from... Because then you have to skip this. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't play D sharp right now. Just go like this. It, it's a hard thing, so just go... So... See what I'm saying? But you still have to have the D down, or do you... No, release the oh, D. Oh, I was no. holding so, the yeah. D. Release that D. <laughs> there it is. Cool. Alright, now, now, now it feels a little weird, and it even looks weird, because yeah. you've never done it before. But practice that a little bit. Now raise your, your, your ring finger when you play D, then go to E, and then raise your ring finger. No, 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 no. Play an E first. And then, and, and then add that B, and then add that. That's an F sharp. That's an F sharp. So, this by itself is an E? That, what you're doing now, is an F. So, it's D, E. Uh-huh. What, where's E flat? Uh, just these two? That's E flat oh, okay. still. So D, yeah. E flat, E, F. No. Or no, F. F. And then F sharp. F sharp. There you go. <laughs> That's going to open up a whole new world because that's the gateway into Altissimo. Mm. All right? Now play just the top button one by itself. Well, play play D and then go up chromatically. And then and then after F sharp, just play the top one by itself.
Try, try going faster. Like explode your fingers. Okay, All right, no. you, you'll work on it. When you can hit that G, that means you're ready for altissimo. But what I want you to Is do. Higher than you, you able to make sounds higher than that G? Oh man, I didn't know that they used. I can't do it on this street. I, I have to warm up more. I, <laughs> but but yeah yeah. Like, it's all part of the process. So right. you you'll get there. It's not a big deal. But here's one thing that I definitely want you to do. Slam. Oh shoot. This is gonna be the best thing, and then I gotta get going. Yep. Slam fingers. Down, explode them up. So when you're coming down, be like I mean with all of your force and might on and whenever speed, I'm doing anything or just for these here. scales. I want oh, you to okay. think of these scales because what that's going to do. So basically. What that's going to do is it's just going to train your fingers. You're overtraining in, in, in a matter of... See what I'm saying? And in that way... And then your fingers are just going to be able to move. So man. you overtrain them so that way you're just like... This is what you should do. This exactly. is what you should do. Exactly. Okay, okay. See what I'm saying? Uh, and that's just me moving my fingers. I mean, that's, that's nothing. Don't even worry about that. That's nothing. So so that's just fingers moving because they know how to move because they've moved like that before. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. So um, between these two studies, if you were to focus on these two things... This for about 15 minutes, and then this one being your Grand Slam workout. Because mm -hmm. you could do long tones with it, and then you could go faster with it. Your goal is to play, so so your goal is to play, uh, uh, alright, so you want to play... <laughs> Triple a triple a triple a triple a sixteenth note no yeah sixteenth note triple it's so we're at sixteenth notes is right and then triple it's second notes. I don't have that there, I just wrote etc, but you can always speed them up. So, um, with these, um, you know, some of the metronomes you can set to, like these beats, of, uh, let's see here, so on this you can have it as, 
or you could do oh. like this. So do you think it's, I mean, obviously it's better for your timing to just leave it as a quarter note and then you feel. Yeah, but, that's um, what you, that, no, that's what you have to train. That's, that's a crutch. That's a crutch. Not that it's a bad idea yeah, yeah, because, yeah. because sometimes it, it comes in handy for when it's appropriate. In this, what I want to train uh, is is your time? Yeah, you subdivide. It's playing slow. Listen to this. Mm. Playing slow is way harder than playing fast. Yeah. If you can play slow, you can most certainly play fast. But then, if you only play fast, you, you're gonna get messed up on a ballad, dude. Like the ballads are the most beautiful songs. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and 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 in ballads, you can't hide. And a fast song like a blues, oh, I made a mistake. Ah, oh, the music keeps going. We're, we're good. We're good. Have fun. Oh, one, two, one, two, three. Great. You can show off because you got technique, and that's great. How about? There's nowhere to hide. Either you're doing it or you're not. So that's why slow. I'm telling you, that's why slow. Okay. And and with you thinking about all these little things, more da, less ta, slam your fingers, diaphragm pressure, corners in, all these things. You have full range, get soft, get loud, get soft. You see it like that? Eventually, you're not going to be thinking about those things. Mm. Those things will become a part of who you are. And it just happens naturally. Just like that. Alright. Alright? Do you have any questions? I mean, this is pretty clear what you have to do, right? Yeah, I just got to make sure that I put the uh, big like star next to this. Oh, <laughs> sure. All right. It's time to pack up, get you paid, be on my way. But yeah, um, I'm not sure what you would want to... Uh, do about uh this week because if i don't have this room to practice and i guess i try to go outside but it's way too cold out there okay um i'll e i like i said i'll i'll email you um the where can you practice today uh um, can you practice today are you going to practice today or 